Good morning and welcome to day two of Video Foundation course. Uh, how's everyone? Hope everything is going fine. We will uh, start day two. So yesterday we talked about uh, the vendor analysis. Then we talked about the uh, imaging technologies, WDR, HLC, IR, low light. There is one more uh, lighting based uh, information that you should be aware of. And uh, that is not exactly on the slide. So I'll pull forward another slide just to explain that to you. Next is a uh, thermal. So we didn't cover this. Uh, so there is another type of cameras. This is called thermal camera. What is the objective of thermal camera? So the objective of thermal camera is uh, to see in absolute darkness. Okay. What is absolute darkness? Uh, if you are looking at, let's say, let me pull out this. Okay, so on the right side, okay, yeah, you can see here night video is absolutely dark. There is no visibility. So if you have pitch black darkness, uh, usually seashore, usually extreme outdoor perimeter protection, um, uh, border security, airport border security, those kind of locations you can look at thermal cameras because they do not depend on light. You can see there is a guy standing here. They don't depend on light. These cameras depend on body heat. Now that's the good thing about these cameras. So you can monitor in absolute darkness, but there is one point here is uh, you cannot see the face details. We can make volume more. Okay, sure. Uh, you cannot see the face details of the person. Okay. So if it is too loud for someone, try to reduce your volume. And uh, for some who's not loud enough, please go ahead. I mean, it this should be fine. This is the closest I can keep my microphone. Okay. All right. Uh, is it fine now? If not, let me know. Okay. So in this thermal camera, clearly you cannot see the face. So you should always have another visible camera next to you. So if you want to look at the who's the person when they are coming near the property or near the area where there is light, you should be able to zoom in and check with a PTC camera. Now there are uh, cameras available in some brands even with us. Uh, it's called uh, dual dual sensor cameras, camera which is having visible and the thermal camera in the same structure. So it will have two head, two lenses, one for visible, one for thermal. So you can get both from the same scene. So you can also look at those type of cameras for perimeter protection. All right. Check. I think my audio is still OK. I think it's fine now. All right. So today we will see uh, the next topic, uh, iris, f-stop, p-iris. These are words that is good to know. If you are not aware of it, they can um, they can be misleading to you, and you might end up buying some lies. 
So first is f-stop. What is f-stop? Uh, f-stop is the number attached to the lens. Any lens will have a number attached to it. So if you take the uh, data sheet of the lens, let me go back to the data sheet. Where is that? Yeah, here. You can see f1.4. You can take any uh, camera. So this is not a data sheet, but yeah, if you take a photo of the data sheet next to the lens, you will see f1.4. What is f-stop? F-stop is basically the opening and closing of the iris. Lower the number, more the opening. Greater the number, small the opening. Now, uh, generally expensive lenses can open more, okay? This is not uh, uh, like it's like a thumb rule. Uh, most exp uh, mostly expensive cameras they have better f-stop. They just say better f-stop. That means it can gather more light and still have good focus on the scene. Okay, when you have a lot of light, the focus can be affected. So you should also have other things to make sure focusing is correct. Uh, smaller f-stops are available in the most commonly available lenses like mass production general lenses. Most of the lens will be 1.2 or 1.4 generally, okay? Now, um, okay, next is, yeah, let's go back to f-stop and iris. So I am browsing through the camera web page right now, and I will explain to you how the f-stop works in real time. So this is a recorded video to make it easy for you. Uh, exposure, there is a setting called exposure in every camera. Under the exposure, you will see currently iris is DC auto. We will see DC in some time. Yeah, I understand. I think I have to keep the mic a little bit far. It's, it's just a second. Let me see if I have. I need a muffler actually. Yeah, just a check. Yeah, I had muted my mic. Uh, how is it okay now? Is it better? Is it loud also? Okay. Okay. Okay, let's proceed. So back to f-stop. So right now on the camera setting, you can see iris that is the opening and closing of the uh, closing of the lens currently it is auto auto means automatically it will close and open the amount of closing and opening will be automatic depending on the light always we keep it auto as 99.5 percent it is auto very rare that you make it manual and you adjust it because the lighting level keeps on changing. There is no way for us to exactly say what is the lighting level required. Okay, so we tell, we let the camera decide by itself what should be the opening and closing. Okay, then.
Okay, now let me go ahead and edit the setting. I changed it to manual setting manual and I increased the f-stop so what happened on the right side when I increased the f-stop automatically the image is dark so bigger the number smaller the light that can go inside the lens okay now I'm going to reduce the number smaller the number light can start entering so if I keep increasing to 1.6 you can see more light can enter when I change it to high no light can enter did you get it so this is the f-stop control generally what we do we keep it as automatic okay done now this closing and opening of iris there are two methods automatic method DC iris and P iris precise iris okay DC iris means you have a motor which is DC motor so it is here let me DC iris it's a DC motor which will control the opening and closing of the iris okay then we have P iris precise iris okay or precision iris what is the uh, difference it uses a different type called stepper motor the benefit is the focus point is much more accurate how is that the difference is here DC motor um, when you give some amount of power it will move okay and uh, let me open one Google and uh, explain Okay, so stepper motor. Stepper motor simply has, uh, you can say there are multiple steps, okay? Multiple steps. You can see these small, 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 multiple steps. So even small, very fine adjustment you can do. For example, focus at 3.6 mm, 3.7 mm, 3.8 mm. You can do very minute adjustment. But when you use a DC motor, it cannot you cannot have very small steps it will go to three it will then jump to four it will jump to five it cannot do the minute steps so that's why when you use DC iris there is a chance you may not have the entire image in correct focus sometimes you can miss okay so here you can see it may look like it is focused but slightly it is blurry towards the end okay this is not a DC iris just a video to give you the uh, difference okay DC iris is not bad because you can see in globally 90% of the cameras are DC iris so you don't really have to worry about it but just know the P iris or precise iris is a little bit more advanced okay you can say a little bit more slightly superior compared to DC iris but no way DC iris is inferior Okay, because you still will find majority of the cameras in the market use DCRS and works just fine. There are enough uh, settings available to make sure the image is in focus. Okay, PRS can make small difference, but it is it is good to have. Okay, it's not a mandatory thing. Okay. Any questions up to this point? All right. Okay, so next point is uh, once again. <coughs> Resolution.
so the minimum resolution that a camera can provide is one sif minimum resolution that a camera can provide is one sif okay so in order to have uh, a better image quality you would have to go with higher resolution okay so back in the day when analog camera was released um, the first camera used to have a very low resolution of one sif okay back then we did not have full hd monitors we did not have hd monitor even that time it was okay the screens were very small it was fine but today we have uh, we i mean in general tendency we like to have more image quality so in order to get more image quality more data should be sent more resolution is needed from the scene so higher the resolution higher the resolution higher the number of pixels okay higher the number of pixels higher the number of uh, data that is being sent okay now how do you visualize one sif is like your visiting card let's say a business visiting card if you take that is the size of a one sif resolution it is very very small okay uh, four sif you can say like a mouse pad or something your mouse pad size roughly that is the size of four sif then um, HD full HD and uh, full HD is like a 20 inch monitor so if you print a full HD uh, video or a photo it will it will be good enough for a 20 inch monitor so that means it is quite big quite sizable okay 4k is something like a 40 inch monitor okay. you can visualize okay now uh, full HD full hd it is also referred as 2 million pixels 2 megapixel is also called 2 million pixel 2 megapixel it is full hd 4k 4k is 8 megapixel or 8 million pixels okay now higher the resolution what is the challenge more data more number of pixel more mbps more throughput more bandwidth everything is more okay the data sent is much more okay what is a relative increase? So compared to one SIF, four SIF is like four times the data size. Compared to four SIF, HD is roughly 2.7 times increase. Compared to HD, full HD is around 2.25 times increase. And compared to full HD, uh, 4K is roughly four times. So the increase is not by 10% or 20% it is almost double double or four times so you you know uh, we are generally using full HD and then we are going to 5 mega we're going to 4k so the increase also will in I mean it will be like an exponential increase so in terms of storage or bandwidth for example if you required 100 GB storage for full HD you need four times roughly more storage for 4k that is 400 GB okay so you got the idea so the resolution is actually uh, it is good but it has more storage data okay nowadays who's con I mean nowadays we are using high resolution because uh, of features like codec what is codec coding and decoding okay codec um, see if you send a uh, Two megapixel data, for example. Second. So if you take a two megapixel video without any compression, without any form of compression, for five minutes of recording, you require 55 GB of data. 
okay five minutes so how to visualize this again i always take this example imagine you watch a five minute video on your phone 55 gb data is gone okay your data package may be finished by this time so without any form of compression so that is the power of codec what is codec it will compress the image without losing the usefulness of the data okay that's why you don't see any difference after you apply a feature called codec okay it is uh, intelligently compressing video to make sure you are not losing uh, the the key factors or changes in the scene okay now what is uh, where is codec happening in analog camera old analog camera the dvr is doing the codec because analog camera is sending the video raw video footage and it is doing the codec in the dvr whereas ip camera the camera itself is having the processor chipset inside it is doing the compression and just dumping the storage on nvr so nvr is only managing the storage checking the days which camera which storage doing motion recording and other things but other than that nvr is not doing any extra compression how do you know this because this is uh, this is ip camera it's got the processor inside that's why the price is much much more compared to analog okay uh, in analog camera you would see dvr with 16 channel maybe maximum you would have seen is 32 channel or something like that but IP camera, you can see easily 100 channel recorders, uh, 64 channel recorders, because there is no effort from the NVR to do any compression. Okay, In DVR, mostly you will see 16 channel, because there is only one processor inside, and it is processing, compressing 16 channels. Okay, So you cannot go more than that for that kind of price, and uh, there are other things. Okay, So uh ip cameras for the same processor it can handle more cameras so that is the thing with nbr okay now uh, so coding is happening in the ip camera what is decoding decoding is when you uh, so the video goes to the nbr from the nbr if you are doing a playback you are seeing the recorded video it is already coded and kept in digital format right 1010 in digital format so you have to decode you have to translate it back to video signal. So that is called decoding. So what is a decoder? Any monitor is a decoder. For example, now you are watching the webinar. Um, so the webinar from my screen, it is digitally encoded, sent over the internet within your network bandwidth, and then it is decoded back at your location, right? It is again it is you can see it is decoded back and now you can see the video so this is happening real time just like a camera cctv camera camera sending the video and it is sent to the control room okay parallelly it is also recording if you want to do playback it will play back from the nbr so this is coding and decoding happening all the time okay now uh, what are the different types of codecs currently uh, most common is H.265. H.265 is roughly uh, now seven years old. Uh, the older H.264 is almost 18 years old. Okay, H.264 is also good. H.265 is much better, but H.265 require more processing. Okay, because more the processing, more it can compress. You got it? more processing more it can compress okay h265 is uh, also uh, better because today we are using high resolution cameras 4k camera 5 megapixel camera it's quite common now all right previously 2004 okay let's rewind your working career go back to 2004 Actually, I was not working that time, but if you go back around 2009, you we were still just migrating from MJPEG, MPEG to this MJPEG or MPEG 4 to H264. We were just migrating that time. So generally it takes five years to everyone to migrate. So around 2009 to 10, there was a lot of migration happening. So, uh, okay. So in, 
this is what I was able to see. Let's say in MPEG-4, the older codec, Okay, MPEG-4, two megapixel. Sorry, let's take four SIF. Four SIF is what 0 0.5 megapixel was taking around two GB data for one day. Okay, codec. Same way in H.264, two megapixel also takes two GB data for one day. So this is what I noticed. The resolution increased from 0.5 megapixel to 2 megapixel, but the storage is the same. Why and how? Because the codec changed. You got it. So the codec will keep changing uh, when the uh, codec lived its purpose. So when MPEG-4 was developed in the year 90s, there was no concept of 2 megapixel. Okay, so the codec, whoever developed it, will not have the best efficiency when it comes to two megapixel. Okay, but when two, H.264 was developed, it worked very good for two megapixel. But now, today we have 4K, 8K cameras. So H.264, again, it'll be weak when it comes to 4K and 8K. That's why another codec was developed, H.265 more number of pixel more image uh, resolution and uh, this codec during the time in 2004 they did not actually have 8k at all so this h264 was not sufficient if you go to 4k you will see it is taking very very high bandwidth so there is nobody is using then eventually uh, I, I mean it was not it, let's say it was taking 10 Mbps, 20 Mbps for higher resolution. So that was way high than what you can handle in terms of storage and the network switches. So they developed another codec, H.265. Okay. Now remember all the codecs, it will compress so intelligently that you will not even notice that it was compressed. That is the benefit of codecs. Okay, so we will see about H.265 plus. You will hear about this also. H.265 plus, H.264 plus. I will come to that just after this slide. Okay, cover it. Okay, now uh, we will see a, a codec in action. So here, imagine this is the frame. The camera is trying to capture a video of the car moving. So in the first frame, the car is in location A. In the second frame, car has moved a bit further. All right, now location A, location B. Now, uh, without any codec, the camera will send these two frame as it is first frame location here second frame location here but when you do codec it will check the scene it will check all the duplicate areas in the scene the you can see the there are some cars parked the road area the pavement everything looks the same in both the frame so what it does it will uh, it will just dump the dump or remove those data redundant data and send only the difference okay and when you're doing a playback, it will merge it. So now you don't really know where the, uh, how it happened. I mean, the next frame, it will merge. So you got the idea. So this is the power of codec. So how much of data is reduced? Almost like 70 to 80% of the data has been removed in the next frame. So when you're sending 25 frames per second, only one frame is I frame. It's called the key frame or the main frame. The remaining is just P frame or partial frame. That's why you are not you are not using uh, 55 GB of data for five minutes. Now we are only getting two GB of data for one day because it is uh, H.264. Because it is H.264, 
now you you need very less amount of data because majority of the data is dropped this partial frame will be like 20 kbps 30 kbps i frame will be 2000 kbps so it will be like 100 times okay uh, no 90 plus percent more roughly imagine where imagine your location where you're sitting only you are looking at the screen and let's say there is nobody in the room that means in the room nothing is moving no changes only only if when you move it changes right very little change in that case why the camera should keep sending the same data again it will send only the difference this is the job of h264 h265 it does the same thing but h265 will do even more it will try to uh, compare even within the small block it will check okay the color is the same it will try to remove the redundancy so more processing it will do to reduce the storage even more so that's why h264 5 requires a more powerful camera more high-end or high processing camera many vendors just migrated two years back um, we developed WiseNet 5 chipset in 2016 or 17. So we migrated in very long back to H265. But most of them, they migrated after the life cycle of the previous product, which is three to five years. So uh, they took some time to migrate. Now, only camera is not the case. Your NVR also should be able to decode, right? If you're recording on this NVR, Again, you need to do something called decoding. So that decoding software will also, you connect a monitor behind the NVR, it has to decode the video. So it has to process more or decoding more. In that case, your NVR also should support H265. So today it is quite common now, so it is okay. Now we will see the next uh, tech thing called H264 plus H265 plus what is this h265 plus okay h264 h265 is known throughout the world that is a common standard now uh, in cctv in cctv domain in the cctv market only in that market you will see this additional compression okay this is not a replacement this is additional that means on top on top of h264 you add additional compression techniques exclusive for cctv exclusive for cctv okay so we call that extra compression technology called y stream so because it is added on top of h264 now this extra compression technology you can add on top of h265 also okay that whatever it is that extra technology we call it y stream some call it zip stream some call it smart compression they have different marketing words for it okay some of them don't use the word they stop it at h.264 plus okay but basically it is h264 plus some additional compression technology okay it is not a global extra global codec or something all right now what is this extra compression technology okay in a cctv uh, in a CCTV scene, what it does is uh, when the, uh, okay, this is the ca camera policy. Okay, let's take one camera. Okay, you can see here G, uh, GOV length gov length group of video length 60 60 means camera frame rate is 30 camera frame rate is 30 so that means it was sending 30 frames per second okay now what is 60 60 means it will send one iframe or keyframe for every 60 p frame partial frame so what is iframe p frame this is the the left side is called the iframe 
the right side is called the partial frame or p frame so group of video any cctv camera generally will send only one i frame in 30 uh, 30 frames out of 30 frames or it will send one i frame for every 60 okay because within one second within one second the change is very very less for most scene for majority of the camera scenes so let's say if i make it 20 it will become 40 automatically you can edit this you can make it 20 also you can edit that's okay but camera automatically thinks okay it is enough every uh, every um, every two second i will send one iframe you got it so if you send uh, iframe let's say 30 frame and you send geo length one that means every frame is a uh, i frame if you send like that that is as good as no compression that means you're not doing any compression. you're sending i frame all the time okay now let's go back what is the job of uh, this how does y stream or h264 plus what is the purpose of this extra compression what it does is it will uh, okay let's bring out that slide H264 2.5 Mbps, H264 plus wide stream around 2 Mbps, H265 around 1.2, H265 plus wide stream around 951, less than 1 Mbps. So how does it happen? In the first stage or when you do wide stream, what it does, it tries to reduce the size of the iframe again okay it will try to reduce it again so how and why does it reduce again okay think of it this way um, iframe one p frame equal to 29 so total total equal to 30 frames now every second okay now what the camera does even every second one iframe it's a bit too much it thinks the camera thinks because the scene let's say idle scene let's say you're looking at a office that is already closed or let's say you're looking at the staircase there is no one in the staircase okay uh, five minutes ten minutes nobody's in the staircase so the what the camera does it understands okay the iframe also is just repeating again and again there is no use to send iframe again and again try to reduce the size of the iframe okay so that is what it does then again one more thing it does that is uh, why to send the iframe every 30 seconds okay so here dynamic geo why to send the iframe every two seconds it will send after five seconds after 10 seconds okay it will increase the interval because because there is no activity the camera is observing the scene there is no activity so it will try to reduce it even more okay so that is the job of y stream or this extra compression techniques now just remember one thing very clearly all the extra techniques will work if the scene is idle when the activity is less okay uh, or wherever the activity is less so uh, you should use it cautiously these kind of extra techniques it is very useful let's say schools offices uh, in the hotels all the staircase cameras no there is nobody using the staircase like all the time right so those kind of locations you can use and surely reduce 30 percent 50 percent storage easily okay so uh, for our uh, 
let me see if I can uh, demonstrate here of okay now the scene is also very quiet there is no activity now well uh, let's have a look So this is a two megapixel camera streaming at 30 frame and it is currently averaging at 1.3 Mbps, roughly 1.3. You see the spike up and down, up and down, up and down. That up is the iframe and it is going down P frame, I frame, P frame like that, okay? now. Uh, I'm going to activate voice stream okay. or the H264 plus or this extra compression technique. So now you can see the graph automatically dropped. Because the scene is idle, it is dropped. Okay, now just a second. When I went near the TV and I tried to turn it on, then you saw the bandwidth going up again. So why stream works like that? If there is activity, it will reuse the full data. Otherwise it will go back to lower data. Okay, this is the extra compression. This is only in CCTV you will see. There's extra in addition to H264. Now I can reduce this even further by telling the camera, why to send iframe every 30 second, I mean, every 30 P frame, reduce even further. Okay, so that is called dynamic GOV. You tell the camera, okay, decide by yourself. You can uh, reduce as much as, I mean, you can increase the, this iframe, maybe you can send every five second. It depends, you decide. So you, we tell the camera, you decide accordingly. So now let me connect again. So you can see the camera bandwidth has uh, reduced a little bit more, you can say, because the TV is moving. It will work when it is idle. So just give me a second. So now the scene is idle, it is dropping to 200 kbps, 300 kbps, and if it looks at the person or some movement, again, it will go slightly up. So it is reducing even further, okay? It is trying to reduce even further. Now you can even change this even more. There is one more setting called dynamic frame. You can, uh, where is that camera? This one. So 
so I'm going to tell the camera reduce the frame rate also if you are not seeing much activity okay I think I didn't save the setting let me first save this 400 and apply okay now let's see okay just a second Okay, now my setting has been uh, just a second why it's not. I am not able to demonstrate that right now. Uh, okay, let me take another model. Just a second. Let's take this guy. Oops, this is a bit easy. Okay, I need an idle scene. XMV, okay, let's check this. Why stream? Turn on. So I have uh, moved the camera to megapixel. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Right click, live viewer. Okay, so now I have activated, already wise stream I activated. Then I activated dynamic GOV. That means I'm telling the camera in reduce the iframe even, uh, I mean, uh, reduce the iframe interval as you like. You can send after five seconds or eight seconds, depending on the scene. If there is a movement, it will send. Then next, I'm telling the camera, reduce the frame rate also. If there is no uh, activity, reduce the frame rate from 25 to 10 frame. I can even do that. So you can see what is the bandwidth now? Less than 0.1 Mbps. 69 68 kbps it's almost zero so now you saw the spike who's this guy iframe okay after that it is just sending p frames okay so when there is some activity it will go back so when i come and show some of my hand near the camera it will increase the bandwidth it will increase the frame rate to what is the actual frame rate and then it will go back. So you got the idea. This is a very powerful technology, but it is good when the scene is idle. You got it. So this is the purpose of this extra compression. Okay. Of course, it will save some 
at least some storage even if there is some movement you can see just a few seconds right after that it is going back it is coming to 2000 and it is going back all right so at least rest of the scene it is still compressing so there is always some amount of savings but you should not assume just because you activated voice stream and other technology you will always get 0.1 mbps if there is some guy walking in the scene it will go back to the original 1.5 mbps or 2 mbp 2 mbps okay so remember this this is a very powerful technology very very useful but you have to be very clear where it can be used. Okay, next is, uh, so that was actually a two megapixel camera with uh, unbelievable bandwidth reduction. Okay, so that is possible with voice script. Next is bandwidth utilization. Okay, we will see that every camera there is a processor. Now that processor can handle only certain amount of stream, okay, uh, or uh, use uh, usability or profile. So this camera has got one, two, three, four profile, video profile. What is a video profile? There is a profile called MJPEG. This is uh, two megapixel, two frames. There is a profile called H264. It uses H264 codec and it is 25 frame. There is another profile called H265. You can ask it to give an, another 25 frame, two megapixel. So what is the difference between all the profile? Each of the profile will have at least one setting different. Either the codec is different or the resolution is different or the frame rate is different. If any one changes, you need a different profile. The camera has to re remake. It's like four different uh, network video. It has to stream. It has to prepare. It has to produce from the scene and send four different profiles. Okay. Now, uh, so many uh, so generally what we do for live view we use h264 because it requires the least amount of compression and you can get full hd at 25 frame rate with a very less bandwidth most of the time we do this then we have another h265 what we do we use that profile for recording because recording we are not we see the recording once in a while only if some incident happens we are opening the recorded video so so the decoding although it is too much processor required but it is not used in the computer all the time so you are recording on the nvr when you do playback uh, only then your processor will be used okay but when you do live video you are using the computer CPU all the time, graphics card and all that. So you can try to reduce the load capacity by using H.264. But when you're recording, you can record in the best compression available and you can use H.265 and uh, you can record in two mega 25 frame again. Or if your project says only 10 frame or 12 frame, you can record 12 frame. You can customize this in the camera. So every camera can give multiple profiles, unique profiles, okay, you can configure. So we have every brand will have different customizations. You can configure multiple different profiles for each camera. Okay, minimum you need three, minimum minimum profile you need customizable is three and this is where most of the big brands or other low cost brands will fall short because they can give you one five megapixel camera so let's say i will take a 4k let me see i have a five also but i'll try to take uh, 4k Okay, I'll just take this one. 
Okay, so I'm going to the settings. This is a five megapixel. I can create one five megapixel. Another five megapixel also I can get H265. And I can, uh, so basically I'm getting stream one full five megapixel H264, another stream, another five megapixel. Some vendors, they cannot give the second stream as five megapixel. Maximum they can give us two or maximum one. Their camera processor cannot handle it. Okay, so this you have to be careful. It's called dual independent resolution, dual native independent resolution. Okay, it should not be dependent. So they will tell you, okay, we can give you five megapixel, but if you want another five megapixel in H.265 for recording, sorry, we cannot give, we have to give, you have to use the same one for recording also, okay? But at the end of the day, it's a five megapixel camera, but behind that, can it give you some flexibility for recording higher and lower as per your project requirement? That's where the cost is. Okay, now why did I say you need one more profile? You need one more profile with, it's called a, another live profile in H.264 at a lower resolution, 800 by 600 or 640 by 480. Because when you do monitoring, live monitoring, this guy is looking at a screen with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cameras. Okay, so this is a full HD monitor, one two megapixel monitor, but he's seeing nine camera. Okay, of course he does not require nine camera into two megapixel. Okay, this screen cannot even handle, it can only handle two megapixel. Your monitor, which you're looking at from your laptop or your monitor, it's a two megapixel. Now, if I put 20 cameras on the screen, there is no point of using all 20 cameras, two megapixel. In that case, you need too much processing from your PC. It's like mo streaming 20 movies. Uh, you require a lot of processor. So what we do is most uh, VMS and NVR, what they do when you ask for multi-stream, they will automatically start the switching of resolution. So this camera right now, it is in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There are 16 cameras that can be displayed here. Okay, so, okay, no worries. So there are 16 cameras that can be displayed. Now, I think this, okay, this PC, I need restart. Okay, now, so if you look at the camera properties, it is showing 640 by 360. 640 by 360. Now, if I make it full screen, if I make it full screen, if I make it full screen, then I check the camera properties. It will, it will be four. It is a uh, 4K. All right. When I make it uh, multi-screen, it will go back to 640 by 480. So what it does, when the camera is streaming in full screen, it will go to full resolution. When it is streaming and uh, multi-small tile, you're only allocating, uh, let's say, I'm going to explain this in one more method for you. Okay, just listen to this one. Let's say this screen size is full HD. Okay, full HD. So what is the pixel? One, nine, two, zero. Okay, now if I'm splitting the screen by four times, okay, so this, this particular tile is one, nine, two, zero divided by four, because I split it. So what is one, nine, two, zero by four? By four, 480. So four, 480. 
okay the full hd screen is now only 480 so that's why if the camera can give one more stream you need only 480 for showing in 4x4 if you do 5x5 even less so it will be better so you need less processor i7 is okay you don't even have to go for graphics card okay you can uh, you don't have to go for a xeon processor you don't have to go with very high end processor or high end graphics cards it's not required you can reduce the cost on and it's a very very simple fix right but the today high resolution is very common too many cameras are very common but the we still are we still use i7 pc okay so in order to make the best use of it the camera if it gives three streams it will help now additional streams or additional profile why do you need if you are recording in two locations if you are recording in two locations i want to record location 1 full resolution another location in a different resolution then you need more stream from the camera okay if you are viewing through the mobile phone that's why you will see uh, let me erase all of this we have a profile called mjpeg you can use it for mobile viewing or you can create another profile with the low resolution for mobile over the internet and so on okay um yes okay so now with this setup you can get you can view more cameras more than uh, you know generally uh there is also one more point you can keep in mind the vms software the vms software most of the time they only use the cpu i7 core i4 core 6 core they use the cpu some vms companies they have drivers for using the graphics card okay so if the vms company that you use does not support graphics card then it is purely dependent on the cpu so when it is purely dependent on cpu you cannot see more than 20 25 cameras of 2 megapixel and if you don't have the third stream it's difficult so when you have third stream you can increase to 60 70 80 cameras even 100 cameras without you know uh, even without the graphics card that is possible okay so that all depends from vms to vms um because the vms software also will have require some amount of cpu usage so that also depends on this vms itself okay so this is a added benefit and today it is a must need feature because you have too many cameras in the project you have uh, very less monitors you are always seeing in multiple view and most of the time when we do estimation we are going with just a basic pc right uh, so this helps in the control room setup all right so we'll take our first break and then we will come back and continue
welcome back uh, let's start the session just wait uh, another a minute is there any questions up to this point if please do post it in the chat window so far i have answered all the questions but if you have any further questions please do post it in the chat window or the question section Okay, let's resume. So till now what we learned is we talked about f-stop, we talked about iris, then we talked about the resolution, higher the resolution, better image quality, you can see more clearly, more details, and uh, it requires more storage and more bandwidth. Um, so to reduce that storage and bandwidth, see, bandwidth is directly related to storage. If you're sending to Mbps, that means you're recording to Mbps. If you're sending five Mbps and you want to record it, so you're recording five Mbps. So the more bandwidth, more the storage. So there are codecs, and there are additional technologies which will try to reduce that bandwidth, okay? So if there is no codec, you end up with 55 GB for just a five minute video. So the codecs allow you to compress the video very sensibly, making sure you don't lose the data. And uh, H.264, H.265 is the latest one. H.265, uh, the, the, H.264 is, let's say, chopping the video in small blocks. H.265 will make bigger blocks. It can uh, identify the car in different directions, more different directions. Maybe the same car is going reverse or side. So it's, it will still know it's the same car. So more calculations it can process. So it's H.265 is more processor intensive. And uh, how we utilize the different codecs, we use H.264 for live view, H.265 for recording, but make sure your camera is capable of giving to native stream. If you want to view in H.264 and record in H.265, the camera should support two times the same resolution in different codecs. The processor is used for that, so make sure your camera is capable of providing that. Yeah, so the session will be shared after the after the completing the class. The recording will be processed and I'll be downloading the recording and uploading it for you for your reference, future reference. Okay. Next, uh, I hope everyone got the PDF copy, PowerPoint copy. And uh, if you don't have it, just check in the handout section in the webinar uh, let me see yeah it is already there in the handout section you can click view handouts you will see the pdf copy i will anyhow uh, attach this file as well uh, for your reference so don't worry about it it is available okay next is camera type there are different shape of cameras 
depending on the application. If you are using the camera indoor inside your office, you can use a small dome camera, looks good. If you want to use the same camera outdoor, you need outdoor protection. You need a, a cap for sun, sunlight, like a sunshade. You need a weatherproof protection, IP66 protection. You have to mount it on the wall, right? In the outdoor, there is no ceiling. So you have to mount it on the wall. So, and you need to see in the nighttime, you need LED, IR LEDs. So this is an outdoor camera, all purpose outdoor camera. You can have even a dome shape for outdoor, but it should be IP66 and so on. You can have that for uh, stainless steel for factory food factory anything to do with manufacturing plants with uh, water uh, in the atmosphere you can use seashore environments you can use pinhole camera for the bank you can use these kind of pinhole cameras uh, we will see about the rest later on okay then <laughs> there are multi-direction cameras that means one camera body with multiple lens. So it is called, let's say, panoramic. You know panoramic view in the mobile phone. Actually speaking, mobile phone is now catching up or copying whatever CCTV is doing. Before we, mobile phones had one camera. Okay, then now they have three and four camera. Then they added panoramic view. They also added the HDR option, which is WDR. So you will see whatever CCTV technology has, it's so easy, they just copy it and it's, they really make it, market it very nicely. Okay, so multi-sensor camera, this is four sensor camera, the cam, it will stitch. So when you take panoramic camera on the phone, you have to move the phone with your hand. But in CCTV, you cannot move the camera. So we have four camera. Okay, they will stitch the image together as one image. So that is panoramic because it is one direction. Looking in one direction, it's a panoramic view. What is the benefit of panoramic camera? If you're an operator, you're monitoring the street, this is one of the best view you can get to get a full coverage. Instead of 10 cameras or four cameras separately looking in, you know, separate by different view. This is one of the best views you can get and full view is available. So here I have a full view of the entire street. Then there are also four direction camera. If you want to look back, right, left, up and down, these kind of four multi-direction, there are cameras with that option also, four direction, okay? Then five direction cameras, on the top there is four direction and a PTZ at the bottom to zoom in zoom out okay yes yeah so, okay then there is two direction if you want perpendicular corridors you can use two direction okay so what is the benefit thanks for that uh, Sayed. so what is the benefit of multi-direction cameras although they are four separate camera okay they act like four separate camera they have four separate sd card they have four separate analytic settings lens option uh, they have separate ir for each all that is separate but they use only one cable one cable comes from the camera to the network switch so only one cable is required then uh, if you are buying VMS, video management software, recording software, you need only one license, recording license, okay? But you will get four camera. So two things, your installation is easy because you just install one camera with four different direction and cost of license, VMS license is also just one when you use multi-sensor camera. So this is the key benefit of multi-direction cameras. Okay, <clears throat> vendor product categorization. Back in the day, back in the day, the category of cameras used to be WDR, non-WDR. You know, when I started with the analog camera, we did not have for analog full HD, analog five mega. There was only four six analog, just half megapixel analog camera. So how we used to categorize back then, analog, non, you know, color camera, day night camera, WDR camera, and maybe low light. Like that, we used to categorize. Okay, that's it. But when IP cameras came, then resolution came into picture. Uh, two megapixel, five megapixel, 
and uh, 4 megapixel and so on so resolution was the first point of difference so imagine when mobile phones launched nokia used to promote 40 megapixel 50 megapixel so back then megapixel of camera was the trend okay but today not anymore we have saturated on that point next point is what more can you get from the camera okay what intelligence you can get from the camera so today we categorize high-end camera low-end camera not based on resolution anymore it is purely based on how the camera can uh, intelligently operate how how many analytics you can get from the camera what is the intelligence in the camera how much it can how many analytics it can run right so purely analytics and other factors such as um, uh, long lenses or uh, you know higher wdr which requires again more processor only those kind of features are the differentiator okay again back to the point today you can find let's say a vendor has category one category two okay okay forget about this slide let let me uh, let me write down a note for you vendor can have series a series b series c all the series or categories all of them can have a 4k camera all of them can have 4k camera okay so don't be confused about this okay it can be very misleading customer may think oh i got a 4k camera but it will have poor wdr it may have poor uh, less streams because number of streams is dependent on the chipset and processing right so this you have to be very very careful okay all right so resolution not the case maybe this guy the wdr performance is less or analytics is very few few maybe one or two analytics one or two analytics very motion detection or something okay whereas series b can have real or true wdr performance it can have better ir uh, range it can have uh, more analytics and so on. maybe series 3 will have artificial intelligence chipset so it requires a different chipset so the brain of the camera now differentiates the processor okay this guy may be one stream only uh, one stream full 4k the other uh, other stream max hd resolution like that you will see this okay i i'm not uh, see for us for hanwa you if we give 4k we will give at least two streams one 4k h264 another 4k h265 this is with us okay but you can find this in other brands how they reduce the prices trying to compromise on this because they don't make chipset they try to compromise on this processor okay yes thanks so this one may be single sd card and uh, it is maybe poe only it does not support external power dual sd supports maybe poe and external power so in case if you want backup power supply for the camera you can use so this is one way of categorization today artificial intelligence is on the premium side multi-sensor cameras are on the premium side long range lenses long range ir are still on the premium side so you will see these kind of features which is not commonly required on the on a different category level not in every camera okay fine so just keep a note and uh, be careful that resolution is not the only difference all right for us for example we have q series x series q series will have six analytics it can go up to five megapixel x series can have 15 analytics it can go with 15 analytics and uh, 4k resolution 5 mega 2 mega all that is there we also have ai in x series today uh, then p series is uh, having multi-sensor cameras artificial intelligence uh, this is vertical camera thermal camera certified housing cameras they come in t-series so this is how we categorize okay 
X series you'll find long range lenses, uh, long range IR, dual SD card, external power supply, built in option, all that falls under X series and above. Okay. All right. Now, uh, shutter speed. What is uh, shutter speed? Very simple. If you want to capture a fast moving object, fast moving object, think of this guy jumping and you want to capture his photo. All right. If you don't have a fast shutter speed, it will be blurred out like this. You see the lady's face is not visible clearly because she's walking quickly and the camera cannot capture that fast. So slower shutter speed will have a blurring of the images higher shutter speed more fast it can capture okay then but if you capture very fast there is a chance that the image uh, the your you're not allowing the camera for uh, maybe you're not opening the eyes enough time you're not giving the camera's eye iris enough time to receive the light you're quickly closing it very fast right so your gathering capability also will be less okay but that is okay there is different ways to compensate okay so when you increase the shutter speed very high the amount of light uh, the amount of light that will uh, reach the camera lens will be less because you are closing and opening the eye very 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 fast that's why when you see number plate cameras, you can see LEDs, white LED, and there is extra LED which is blinking because it number plate cameras are very fast moving, very fast shutter speed cameras. And when it is very fast shutter speed, the amount of light that will enter the lens within that fast time will be very less. That's why they have flash, you know, radar camera, they have a flash because the, they need light. That's why they put their own light to capture the number plate, speeding cameras and all that. Okay, so uh, you give more light to make sure the image is very bright enough to get the number plate. Okay, now I will uh, try to explain this uh, shutter speed. Let me see this camera. Okay, I'm going to try to demonstrate live. Let's have a look. This camera is not updated yet. So anyhow, we'll proceed with what we have. So here we go, virus, gain of shutter speed, shutter speed. Right now, the preferred shutter speed is one by 25, one by 200. I'm going to make it high. Okay, I'm going to make it high. So when I increase the shutter speed, what happened? The amount of the time given to the camera to capture the light is so low that it became dark okay on the right side it was the situation before what was the before situation the shutter speed was 1 by 30 that means you are giving enough time within one second the shutter is closing 30 times okay now if you increase the shutter speed within one second, you are closing 10,000 times, closing and opening the shutter. Okay, so this is good, but you need to have good lighting. This light, with all this light is still not enough. So what the camera does to compensate for low light, it will do something known as automatic gain, automatic gain. You know, many of you said my volume is low. So what you did, you increase the volume. Same way camera will increase the gain to middle. So now you can see it is, it is amplifying the light signal. Whatever light is available, it is amplifying. Still, it is not as rich as on the previous setting. Now it can capture very fast moving object and because it also has other feature called gain control automatic gain control automatically it will increase the gain so if i make it high it will be a bit more brighter slowly but that's okay so this is the purpose of gain a night can become day because of gain but there is a problem when you do gain 
the image will become noisy what if there is any noise if there is any blurriness it will also get amplified so we will see this uh, how do you for example let's say I when I when I keep the mic very close to my phone you can see some extra noise coming out sometimes my breathing sound you can hear right or if some uh, mobile phone is ringing if that also will be heard so this is all noise which you don't want to hear right because you increase the volume you will hear unwanted sound from the background so that is called noise okay now here uh, let's say this is the picture taken or a video at 300 lux good lighting 300 lux is your office lighting good lighting everything is bright but when i reduce the light by 5 lux that's like 30 times i'm reducing the light almost dark 5 lux is like night time okay so but it still looks like day because because there is gain control the camera is applying gain and automatically it change the setting to high okay when you use gain control there is another feature called noise reduction ssnr noise reduction because when there is noise you need another technology called noise reduction technology that noise reduction is kept at level 12. shutter speed is 1 by 5. why 1 by 5? because light is so low so the camera thinks why to close the shutter very fast i will uh, try to keep it at 1 by 5. okay by the way we never tell the camera what is the exact shutter speed we try to tell the camera the range we say okay try to be 1 by 5 to 1 by 12 it will change automatically keep on changing depending on the scene okay now on the right side when i try to capture the number plate on the train it is very blurry okay not good enough so what i do in this case i increase the shutter speed 1 by 200 before it was one by five. Now I increase the shutter speed. When I increase the shutter speed, image became dark. Second thing, still not good enough. Okay, then what I do, I will switch off the noise reduction because, because of high noise reduction, the images, uh, there is a side effect actually. Uh, noise reduction, when you increase, there is something called ghosting that can occur like, uh, let me explain that. So here, this is a very low light, okay? Lights are switched off. The guy is walking. You, you cannot see the guy, right? It's just ghosting. Okay. So now, you see the guy walking in. Now, if you add light, no need to do noise reduction. You can see him normally walking in, walking out. It's much more better. This is taken from YouTube. So you can see here, when the light is very low, the camera is opening the iris very much. And then because there is too much noise, it is applying noise reduction. When there is noise reduction, that means it is removing some parts in the frame that causes a side effect called ghosting. Two, three objects you will see at the same time. So now in this image, I switched off noise reduction. Uh, before it was called Samsung Super Noise Reduction, now it's Smart Super Noise Reduction. I switched it off. When I reduce the noise reduction to off, shutter speed is high, gain is high, the number plate is very clear. But what's the problem is the image is not good looking. You see the image, it's so grainy, very blurry here and there it is not acceptable so you need noise reduction also and you need uh, shutter speed also you need gain also so this is what we call as a triangle you edit one feature exposure one you edit shutter speed other two will get affected you edit noise reduction shutter and other things will get affected so everything gets affected when you adjust one or the other okay so it's a headache so this is where most of the people spend time fixing at the main entrance, car number plate, trying to find the correct shutter speed and so on, okay? Now let's go to the next slide. So in this case, what we do is we go to the next step. That is,
yeah now because uh, because it's so blurry because of the noise it's grain graining i switched off this guy switched off or made it low noise reduction is low sorry uh, gain control is low okay noise reduction is off image is dark uh, sorry put it back here okay uh, noise reduction is off but the image is having graining effect all this dot 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 because too much of noise the noise is amplified because of very high gain because you are amplifying the signal so if you reduce the gain control again the image becomes even more darker uh, but that graining and that uh, blurring all that is removed now so it is more clear however still not acceptable so we have to find the balance we have to find the balance between gain middle noise somewhere less shutter speed maybe 1 by 120 so this is the job of our of the team on the field to make sure they find the correct shutter speed okay next is uh, image preset so most cameras uh, they have uh, predefined settings you can just uh, drop down and select automatically the shutter speed and other things will change so if you put number plate setting again it will change to the required shutter speed so noise reduction setting all that will change by itself so you don't have to do it manually all the time for majority of the scenes you can use the preset just like in your phone you have night mode this uh, vivid mode you can use that in the camera okay so uh, this is not for today all right let's go back okay so uh, that's all for today if you have any further questions let me know otherwise we can uh, disconnect and we will continue tomorrow tomorrow we will talk about uh, um, <clears throat> analytics we will talk about on with and uh, yeah so take two So tomorrow we will be talking about analytics, AI, on with These are somewhat, I've covered a lot in the last two years. So we will talk about this, cybersecurity basics. What is NBR, what is server-based storage, NAS, DAS, all that. Okay, so day four, we will talk about uh, VMS, control room requirements and so on. All right, thank you so much for your time. Have a nice day and uh, I will unmute Sudhir and Hadil. If you have any questions, just let me know. Let me stop the recording for now. Yeah.